So that was my first taste of advocacy. And I, I kind of rode the coattails of that book for two, three years until about the age of 24 and it fizzled out and I was kind of back at square one. You know, here I am still kind of living with my parents, um, still Friday, Saturday nights, while other kids are now either in college or already graduated from college. I'm 24 and I, I still really haven't had a girlfriend. I don't have any friends. I, I'm standing or I'm sitting in my, my bedroom on Friday and Saturday nights crying like I did when I was 18. Uh, so I, I was back at square one. And, you know, the, again, the, the book kind of fizzled out. I didn't know what to do. And about for about six months, I was trying to figure out how to, how to carve my little cutout in this world, how to create a piece of this world for me. What, what can I do that will suit me? Because I knew I had something to give back. Uh, I, I knew I've always been very confident in myself, um, in, in my abilities. Uh, it, it's just very difficult for people to, unfortunately, uh, give me the, the a helping hand to showcase those abilities. So I kind of got fed up at this point and I was like, you know what, that, that book I put out there uh, and it helped so many people without me even trying. Um, what's going to happen if I actually try it this time around? I came up with the idea to start public speaking. And I did that because one of the biggest accomplishments of my adult life was my first book won a prize, a international prize for literature um, up in Vancouver, Canada. And I went to a different country with my mom. And uh, it, it, I was 23 when that happened. And I went up there and struggled a lot, but my mom was there with me to help me along and I uh, accepted the award. I got up on stage and I was so nervous, but once they asked me if I wanted to give a speech, I, I said yes and I was so nervous. But the minute I got behind that podium and I, my mom was in the front row and I had this award in my hand, very well could have been the first time I, I felt peace of mind in my adult life, uh, standing behind that podium. Um, and I spoke and I wasn't anxious. There was no anxiety. Um, all I felt was immense, immense pride in how far I had come, um, how far I, how, 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 how much I fought back. I just keep getting slammed face down to the pavement by this world, but I, but I always get up and fight back. And I'm in Canada now my mom smiling at me and I dedicate the award to her. And that, that was so empowering. That's what made me decide to start public speaking because I realized oddly enough how I was more comfortable speaking on stage than I was to people one-on-one -on -one. and how confident I was and comfortable sharing my emotions. Um, I, again, I say life has taken from me everything I ever wanted, but in turn gave me everything I ever needed. And by that, I mean, that social isolation that was very prevalent throughout my life, I wasn't societally or socially conditioned to hide my feelings as many of us are. I was, uh, I, I pre preserved my individuality. I, I didn't, I still don't to this day adhere to uh, society's groupthink mentality. I, I have my Russell mentality. I, I preserve my individuality. I'm a very pure individual because of my isolation from this world and from how much I've been hurt and knowing that if I were to sacrifice my individuality, I, I wouldn't be able to make as much of a difference if I was the same as everybody else. So I gave my very first speech at the age of 24, a uh, local event up in Reno. Apparently it, it was really good because there's somebody in the audience who uh, wanted me to speak for them and then it just snowballed from there. I, I did not think it would be my full-time job uh, in, in just two short years from the age, from the time I gave my very first speech. So I've been speaking now for about five years. Um, and it's been my full-time job for the last three years. And what I do is, you know, I, I, I travel all over, you know, whenever I can, um, keynoting conferences and doing a lot of workshops, not just talking to autism, uh, audiences, but mental health professionals. I, I talk to doctors and, and tell them my experience, how, Doctors were uh, a big reason behind a lot of my painful experiences and how can I, I always, with each pre presentation I give, I always ask myself, how can I use my hindsight to give others foresight and insight? Because I want to utilize all that pain 
that was put on me and that I've experienced to create opportunity for others. Um, and so I, I, I talked to everybody under the sun, you know, I've talked to, you know, just name it, you know, I've talked to them. I've trained first responders, I trained doctors, I, I trained nurses, I talked to, I keynote autism conferences, I keynote disability conferences, do a lot of workshops with teachers. And the one thing that people enjoy more than anything from my presentations is my authenticity. Uh, because I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm, I'm going to tell, talk about the struggle. I'm going to talk about the pain. I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, how fed up I can, can get with this world to this very day. Because we, we can't hide our feelings. Um, and, and, and so I'm very authentic. But at the same time, as much as I talk about everything I've been through, I, I talk about everything that I have overcome. Uh, and I always say that the comeback is and will always be stronger than the setback. Pain is inevitable in life. We're all going to go through pain. There's no way around it. My, my goal is to prevent unnecessary pain. I've been through a lot of unnecessary pain. Granted, it's taught me a lot about life. And that's why I've decided to implement what I've learned to help others uh, prevent that unnecessary pain. I'm a very positive person. And honestly, I don't know how I'm still so positive. It, it boggles my mind sometimes after everything I've been through to always still see the good in people, no matter what they do, um, to always, always look on the bright side. Um, granted, when I'm having a really difficult day, I, I obviously, you know, wish I wasn't going through it, but I always take time to reflect and meditate on my um, situations and, and take the gold out of each situation situation i mean it there's you got to go mining for it you know gold in life whether they're in, in form of a, a life lesson or a confidence builder you got to go mining for it you got to go reflecting back into your past experiences to mine for that those gold nuggets that life can bring you because it's there uh the the most beautiful things in life uh are are in front of our eyes we, we just have to be aware enough to to realize that, that they are beautiful um, it, it's all about how we see things, how we perceive things, and our perspective on life. So what I do is, again, I, I tell my story and I use my story as a catalyst to help others not only tell their story, but to help other people in positions of authority and uh, in power to remember, keep in the forefront of my mind, uh, in, keep in the forefront of professionals' minds that every action they they take uh, especially with children is a life it's going to last a lifetime whether it's a good action or a bad action and every action that they do not take is going to have its effect for a lifetime because there act there were teachers in my past that could have stepped in but they didn't they didn't take the action that was needed to be i tell it like it is it, it's a long road it's a long journey you're going to feel like giving up. You're, you're going to feel like crying. Go ahead and cry when you feel like crying. You're going to feel like yelling. Go ahead and yell. You're going to feel like, you know, just, uh, just screaming at the top of your lungs and, and cussing out the world sometimes. Go ahead and do it. But when you feel like giving up, don't. Don't give up. You've come this far. You can't go back now. You, you can't stop now. The best is always yet to come. It's a, it's a long road, but it's a beautiful journey. And it's not about the destination. I, I, I hope to God I never reach my destination because that means my journey is over. The moment I reach my destination, I'll be dead. It's about learning to enjoy the ride, learning to enjoy the downs just as much as the ups because the most profound lessons I've learned in life, the most profound meanings I, I found in this crazy life have been in the valleys. And that, after I experienced the valleys, gives me the confidence to move forward to get a different perspective and, and climb the highest peaks. I, I'm not going to say that, you know, there's an answer to, to figure out all the suffering in this world and how to prevent your kid from going through pain or from yourself from going through pain. It's not about preventing things. Uh, it is in terms of unnecessary pain. But again, we have to learn how to enjoy the good and bad. Life is meant to be enjoyed. And when we suffer, how many times in hindsight do we come to kiss the feet of adversity? 
we have to use our hindsight to generate foresight and, and to generate mindfulness within our circumstances as tough as they may be you're going to come to actually really be thankful for this moment when you look back at it so that's that's what i get across to people it, is it, it's i'm not going to say this is my story look how far i've come this can be you too because everybody is not me and i'm not everybody i just want to give you uh the lessons i've learned to implement in your own life um, because I truly believe my lessons learned can be generalized into anybody's life. Uh, I'm not going to tell people how to live. I'm not going to tell people how to do things. Uh, I just want to give you the knowledge uh, along with the vehicle of compassion and, and kindness and emotional awareness to be able to live your best life and help others you care about live their best life as well.